Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this uh, Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist for the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show on this uh, eighth day of October 2020. Up first, uh, no watches, warnings, or advisories out for uh, southern Alaska here, the Panhandle, and the uh, Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island area, as well as the northern interior. Uh, no watches, warnings, advisories out that way, as well as out west in the Aleutians and the Bering Sea. On the satellite, though, a pretty good uh, system there, centered near Kodiak Island, uh, pushing a front, and uh, gale, good gale force winds up into the North Gulf Coast uh, today with uh, gusts to about, uh, let's see, 53 miles an hour, Barren Islands and at Augustine Island this afternoon, and Middleton Island about 45 mile an hour wind gusts and uh, rain roughly about a third of an inch in the last 12 hours from Iliamna to Igigik, uh, and then along the North Gulf Coast, rain increasing. Uh, Yakut had had about a third of an inch, just barely getting onto the coast of the Panhandle with uh, two hundredths of an inch reported at Gustavus, and Sitka had about one one hundredth of an inch. Higher pressure uh, resulted in some clearing and kept it dry down over the southern and eastern part of the, of the Panhandle today. And also a fair amount of clearing up over the interior north of the Alaska Range or in the Copper River Basin. Uh, Gulcana was uh, reporting uh, mostly clear skies this afternoon. The southeast winds gusting to 31 miles an hour, down sloping wind there, helping clear it out. And uh, same thing along the eastern Alaska Range, Delta Junction, seeing winds gusting to about 30, 35 miles an hour. And that resulting in some pretty good clearing there over much of the central and eastern interior, all the way up to about the Brooks Range. But lots of clouds over the southwest interior today and a band of uh, moisture with uh, some low pressure out over the Bering Sea. Got a trough there from just south of St. Lawrence Island, uh, now east of the Pribilofs, and uh, some clearing out over the western Aleutians and showers and clearing along the entire Aleutian chain actually up to about the Alaska Peninsula. And uh, good west winds though gusting to around 40 miles an hour, Adak, Atka, or actually 45 miles an hour around Adak and Atka. And, uh, along the Alaska Peninsula about 35 miles an hour and uh, rainfall not too not too much uh, showers uh, result in a few hundreds in areas there and rolling this along again uh, clouds up over the north slope and the uh, Arctic coast and a few flurries and uh, but nothing really significant uh, windy conditions though up along the about the entire stretch of the Arctic coast especially the central and western Arctic coast dead horse Point Barrow reporting gusts to about 40 miles an hour out of the east and east this afternoon. And uh, again, just some very uh, few flurries or light snow showers, but nothing too significant. There were showers uh, scattered around Kotzebue Sound, where Kotzebue had gusts to about 40 miles an hour today out of the southeast and 37 miles an hour at uh, Nome there with tighter gradient. Uh, and that low center 972 millibar southwest of St. Lawrence Island. So uh, windy conditions there and a few showers for St. Lawrence Island. Kind of increased along that trough down toward Nunavak Island, just east of the Pribilofs, down into the eastern Aleutians. And most of the uh, steadier rain is north of the Aleutian chain as we saw some clearing and more showery conditions. but still breezy there for the Adak and Atka area out towards Chimianat too. And high pressure is starting to give way now off the uh, over the southeast part of the panhandle there, uh, but held long enough to keep it dry for the most part through the day today. But rain increasing along the north coast and central coast just starting and uh, continuing along the North Gulf Coast with the uh, wind and rain a little bit heavier, but not too, too much heavier there. Again, just a third of an inch at Yakutat and some rain across uh, Kodiak Island and showers over the southwest interior. Looking at the forecast for tonight, uh, just a slow movement of that system. The front doesn't really make much more eastward progress there, but the high pressure does uh, continue to erode away. So clouds and showers will be on the increase over the southern pan. It may stay dry over the toward the eastern border there, Petersburg, Wrangell, maybe up to Juneau, just a chance of some light rain. Better chances of rain, a little bit of an increase in the wind along the coastal areas there. As our front does try to press in, the gradient tightens a little bit. Uh, probably good for small craft advisories. 
and uh, light rain or showers continue for the entire North Gulf Coast into Prince William Sound, probably a little heavier in western Prince William Sound, Portage into uh, in Passage Canal, say down toward Homer, and also Seward across the uh, southern Cook Inlet. There'll be periods of rain into uh, Augustine Island, Kamishak Bay, Pedro Bay, Iliamna, showers for King Salmon, showers over the Southwest Mountains. The interior though, uh, basically dry, and probably see a little bit of a decrease in the winds there through the Eastern Alaska Range passes, and it'll stay dry with some clearing. And a couple of troughs will bring some uh, skiffs of light snow or snow showers to the Eastern Arctic coast, as well as the central areas, but again, amounts uh, not really significant at all, and most areas won't see anything at all. Look for rain or snow showers there for the Bering Strait area and still a widespread area of rain and fog, mostly over the central and southern Bering Sea, and that starts to scatter out down toward the Aleutians, a little more showery there and uh, more intermittent. And winds uh, slowly diminishing, but still pretty breezy for the eastern Aleutians there. And light wind conditions there from uh, St. Matthew Island, the northern Bering, into the southwest interior to Kodiak Island, virtually a real lack of gradient there resulting in light and variable winds. For tomorrow, that pattern continues as well. Not much change in the interior, variable clouds and partly to maybe mostly sunny skies and still uh, brisk east winds or east northeast winds from the Arctic coast across the Brooks Range into the northern interior, mainly higher elevations like Indian Mountain, for example. And then winds uh, start to get pretty light there into the central Tanana Valley and southward into much of southern Alaska. Should be light winds and chance of rain continues there for the North Gulf Coast along with some fog. And now that uh, low pressure area kind of uh, splitting off, still uh, one low persisting near Kodiak and uh, another one, 984 now, trying to get into the central coast of the Panhandle. And the front uh, weakens and does bring rain to the coastal areas of the Panhandle, Prince of Wales Island, but uh, has, a, has trouble getting into the uh, eastern part of the area there. So just cloudy skies you may escape rain over the, uh, from say, Hyder up to uh, uh, Petersburg, Wrangell, and uh, possibly Juneau, just a chance of showers there like tonight. And for the Alaska Peninsula, we got several low, a couple of lows out over the Bering Sea there. So westerly flow, periods of rain, especially on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, more of a showery condition and drier on the Pacific side in the downsloping areas. And chance of rain fog for the southern Bering Pribilofs down to maybe the eastern Aleutians and one trough might reach far enough south to bring more of a steadier rain and uh, maybe west winds gusting to 30, 35 miles an hour for Adak and Atka, but then that improves and lightens up as you head out towards Shimia and at two. And offshore flow, those easterly winds uh, could result in clear skies along the northwest uh, coast, definitely VFR for the Seward Peninsula, as well as uh, parts or the northern part of the Yukon Delta, Norton Sound area. And for the uh, first day of the weekend on Saturday, shaping up like this, uh, Upper level low, uh, they're west, actually west of Bank, Banks Islands aloft, starting to uh, try to push a little farther south and that'll uh, push some colder air and increase the snow threat for the eastern Boulevard Sea coast and maybe the north slope, but at this point it doesn't look like anything too heavy, but kind of a uh, general cons persistent light snow pattern there with uh, northeast winds. Uh, be pretty brisk on the western Arctic coast, could see gusts uh, anywhere from 35 to 45 miles an hour from Point Lay down to Cape Lisburn and maybe Point Hope and then lighter for the northwest coast, but still uh, easterly flow should keep it dry with VFR conditions, possibly for St. Lawrence Island and even some clearing for the Seward Peninsula, Noatak Valley, Kobuk, Koyukuk Valley is looking pretty good. And some snow showers might sneak south of the Brooks Range there in toward uh, Eagle and uh, just south of the Yukon River, the upper Yukon Valley areas, but whatever does fall will be light, and it'll stay dry, Copper River Basin, light winds there, as opposed to what you're seeing today, uh, with about the same conditions there with some afternoon, with some clearing anytime during the daytime hours. That'll extend into the Susitna Valley as well, be mostly cloudy for the Manuska Valley, Northern Cook Inlet, maybe a precipitation-free day on Saturday, but uh, periods of light rain continue with that uh, southeast flow coming up around the eastern perimeter of the uh, low there that's centered uh, just about on top of Homer. And, that, and then showers for Yakutat and either rain or showers and cloudy skies, uh, pretty good bet for the entire southeast coast, but winds will be light. And the Bering Sea, not a lot of change, some scattered showers along the southwest coast from Nunavak Island in toward King Salmon to Kodiak, and periods of light rain, fog, and drizzle from the Alaska Peninsula extend all the way out and actually increase there from Adak and Atka to Shimianat too with a little bit tighter gradient. Could see some small craft advisory level winds with that. 
And for lows for tonight, uh, upper 20s uh, for the Arctic coast and upper teens to lower 20s, north slope into the Brooks Range. And upper 20s, uh, mid to upper 20s from uh, Tanana Valley, upper Yukon Valley areas to near 40 along the southwest coast. Lower 40s along the uh, North Gulf Coast, Alaska Peninsula, Aleutians, and the Panhandle, lower to mid 40s, and in the 30s for southern Alaska and the Copper River Basin. Highs for tomorrow, lower, lower 50s, south central Alaska, and in the 40s, the Copper River Basin, lower 50s for the southeast coast, lower 30s on the north slope, and 28 to 32 for the north slope, I'm sorry, the Arctic coast, lower 30s, and in and near freezing for the Brooks Range, otherwise 45 to 50 all the way out to the southwest coast. Low Saturday morning, mid-20s for the Arctic coast. Uh, colder there in the Brooks Range, mid-teens, Arctic Village and Anatovic. And uh, mid-20s for the Tana Valley and uh, upper 30, or in the 30s, southern Alaska near 40 along the coast. And upper 30s, lower 40s for the Alaska Peninsula near 40 for the Aleutians. Highs on Saturday, 20s. North of the Brook, or from the Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast for highs in the 20s and mostly in the lower 40s across the central interior, upper 40s, lower 50s, southern Alaska, 51 for Kodiak, and upper 40s and mid 50s there for the Panhandle, and 45 to 50 about covers it for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving into flying weather, we've got IFR. Uh, pretty well entrenched along the Arctic coast, north slope, and into the eastern Brooks Range, cross eastern Brooks Range of the upper Yukon Valley. Marginal VFR there along the Yukon River to about Eagle. Then from Eagle southward to the eastern Alaska Range, Northway Toke, maybe Delta Junction, IFR. And then some uh, VFR back to the west, central Tanah Valley, on down into the northern Kuskokwim Valley, Susitna Valley, northern Cook Inlet, VFR, IFR, western Prince William Sound. Band of IFR there along the north coast of the Panhandle and IFR Bristol Bay from actually from Kamishak Bay across the Aleutian Range on up across the northern Bering Sea to St. Lawrence Island. Marginal VFR Southern Bering Sea, Eastern and Central Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak. For the afternoon, looks like some VFR moving into the Western Alaska Peninsula, otherwise IFR Pribilofs northward to St. Lawrence Island and the Bering Strait all along the Southwest Coast, cutting into Kuskokwim Bay and across the Southwest Mountains in Northern Bristol Bay to Lake Iliamna. Marginal VFR Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, Prince Liam Sound, up the east side there, uh, marginal VFR, but just to the west, central, western interior, all the way out to Norton Sound, Yukon Delta, northward there to uh, Kotzebue, Selawik, and part of the Brooks Range. Uh, VFR, IFR now along the south or along the coast of the Panhandle, stays IFR up over the North Slope and Arctic Coast and Northern Bering Sea. And for the uh, Saturday morning outlook, we've got VFR there. It looks like for the far western Aleutians to about Amchitka Island, marginal for Adak and Atka, eastward to the Alaska Peninsula, Pribilofs Marginal, IFR Northern Bering Sea, across St. Lawrence Island to the Bering Strait. IFR holds over the North Slope and Arctic Coast to the Brooks Range, some of that spilling south of the mountains though. With marginal VFR southward, another IFR zone in the central interior, IFR, North, eastern North Gulf Coast and all of the southeast coast now in the IFR zone. And for the afternoon, Saturday becomes marginal there for the Panhandle and stays IFR for Prince William Sound, northward across the Talkeetna's western Copper River Basin, just a narrow band though. And then along the central and eastern Alaska Range, looks like a zone of VFR there from the upper Yukon Valley, westward to the Notak Valley, Kobuk Valley, and uh, Seward Peninsula, northwest coast. IFR, small zone there on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, and IFR from St. Lawrence Island to St. Matthew Island, down to St. George and St. Paul, and then extending southwestward there to Kiska Island, Shimmy and Attu, with marginal VFR, southern Bering Sea, all of the Aleutians, and most of southern Alaska, Gulf of Alaska, into the Panhandle. And for Anatovic, uh, IFR tomorrow, go marginal for Ad again. Uh, actually, both passes there could be uh, a trend from IFR in the morning to marginal in the afternoon type of thing. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, mostly marginal throughout the day. And for Friday, rainy, uh, looks like it'll become VFR after starting out with some marginal VFR conditions. Windy, marginal VFR possible anytime during the day, uh, north or south entrance. Isabel, marginal VFR. And for Mentasta, looks uh, occasionally marginal there. And for Tanita, go VFR. Well, it will be VFR flying for Tanita past tomorrow. Portage, marginal VFR, and Chilkoot and White, also marginal. Freezing levels, uh, 
Two to 4,000 feet there over the west central interior. Not a lot of gradient here with the jet stream a little farther to the south, about two, four, two to 4,000 feet across the southeast coast. And uh, taking a look at the icing, you can see uh, with that band, that front pushing in or continued southwest flow, an area of considerable moderate rime icing now just making landfall along the coast uh, during the day tomorrow. Otherwise, light to isolated moderate rime icing for the North Gulf Coast, Kenai Peninsula into Shelikoff Strait and the Aleutian Range. And then areas of uh, light to very isolated moderate or mixed icing, Southern Bering Sea down to the Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. And the jet stream, upper level high there over the central north slope, northerly flow uh, eventually bringing some colder air down into the eastern Arctic coast. That upper level low over the next few days will be dropping almost due south. And uh, otherwise, we've got uh, the main jet well to the south or just to the south of the Aleutians, uh, just catching 65 knots and uh, cutting back up into the uh, panhandle. Most of the strongest flow into the south with 75 knots catching the southern southeast coast and east southeast flow between the high and the north and the low over the Yukon Delta over the interior. And at 9,000 feet, uh, several lows, uh, Bering Sea, one near uh, Oh, let's see, Shelikoff Strait and the other one uh, west of the Panhandle. So we got the uh, jet cutting across, or 45 to 50 knot winds over the western Aleutians, both at 3,000 feet. Turbulence, occasional moderate chop for the Panhandle, Aleutians, and eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Hey there, Venusian vagabonds. Vociferous, vivacious Trace here to point you in the direction of our voluptuous neighbor planet, Venus. Venus was named for the Roman goddess of love and beauty, similar to Aphrodite of Greece. It is closer to the sun than we are, so Venus will often appear in the morning, before the sun, or just after it sets. For this reason, the ancient Greeks actually had two names for this one planet. The Greeks called it Phosphorus and Hesperus, morning star and evening star. They finally realized it was just one planet around 30 BCE. Only the sun and moon are brighter in the sky than Venus, which makes it easy to find. Wake up early around 5 a.m. and Venus will already be well above the horizon, shining bright and pure. What a stunner. Get out there and share her story while you keep looking up. The beluga whale, also known as the white whale, lives in large groups and are unusual among whales. They have no dorsal fin, large bulbous heads, and they can actually swim backwards. To feed, they produce sound to find and hunt fish and invertebrates, and they use sound to communicate. They're also known as the canaries of the sea because they make such a diversity of noises. They make chirps and whistles and gurgles and trumpeting sounds. They just make all kinds of sounds. In the U.S., beluga whales live in the cold waters of Alaska, and there are five separate populations. Of those five, the Cook Inlet population is the smallest and has declined by about 75%. Subsistence hunting may have contributed to this initial population drop, but this practice was regulated starting in 1999, with the last hunt in 2005. Still, the beluga population here has yet to recover. We listed Cook and the beluga whales as an endangered species under the Endangered Species Act in 2008, and we had hoped that the population would start recovering, but we are still seeing a continued decline. And these beluga whales are only found in Cook Inlet, so if they go extinct, we don't think any other belugas will come back and populate this area. These whales spend most of their summer near Anchorage, Alaska's largest city, where threats to belugas are on the rise as the city grows. These may include diminishing food, habitat loss or destruction, pollution, toxins, and human-caused noise which hampers their ability to feed and communicate. Researchers are trying to understand which of these threats may be impacting them most, but Cook Inlet is a tough place to work. It's really hostile for research. We have the strong tides, which makes it challenging for human safety, and we can't see through the water. It is very muddy, so we're pretty much limited to the part of the animal that breaks the surface of the water. And as a result, we have limited information about the specific population dynamics of Cook and the Beluga whales. Up until recently, 
Information has mainly come from annual aerial surveys from aircraft and boat or shore-based photo identification surveys that use unique markings to tell animals apart. Scientists also use passive acoustics to listen for belugas, but none of these methods can detect much information about their health. So it's really been a game changer with, with the whole species in the spotlight designation. We've gotten more resources within our agency. For instance, we're able to use a drone to collect some aerial imagery of belugas in the wild, and we're hoping to learn some information about the age classes, information about the health status. And probably the most important bit of information that we'll get out of that is we'll be able to identify the new calves. And we're hoping if we keep doing this every year, we'll be able to get an estimate of calf production every year that will tell us something about how well the population is doing. We are also expanding upon our biopsy studies, hopefully to give us some information about sex, the individual's reproductive status, some genetic information, uh, some contaminant loads. Public and private partners are contributing as well. Some are looking at toxin levels in the whale's prey, while others are analyzing beluga teeth to learn about their age and past diet. Others monitor water quality and how belugas react to boats, and more check to see if their behavior changes with increased background noise. All of these findings will go toward developing effective recovery strategies for this population. As for what you can do, if you're out boating, give beluga space. Don't drive right up next to them. Stay about 100 yards away. If you're flying over them, just remember that you're putting noise into the water as well, and so stay at least 1,500 feet above them. Report a stranded beluga whale as soon as possible, and that's if they're dead stranded or live stranded. The amount of information that we can learn from these animals by responding to a stranding is monumental and it will help our efforts to recover them. Together we can help beluga whales thrive in the dynamic waters of Cook Inlet. With continued research and good stewardship, we hope to see this population grow in the years to come. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's sea ice analysis. Uh, uh, still north of the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast and north of the Bar Barrier Islands, for sure. And uh, looks like uh, over the next five days, it'll slowly drift south or, or west or west-southwest there with the wind flow. And for the coastal water forecast, uh, gale warnings all along the coast for the south coast, southeast winds, 35 knots with 17-foot uh, seas. And on the north coast, east winds, 35 to 40 knots. Otherwise, uh, Lincoln on Glacier Bay, much lighter, north at 10 with 2-foot seas, northeast 15 for Stevens Passage. And Clarence Strait, southeast winds increasing to 25 knots with 5-foot seas. And moving on to first day of the weekend, Saturday, southeast 10 for Clarence Strait and slight seas with southerly winds 15 knots for the central and northern inside waters with three foot seas. And lighter winds now along the coast out of the west for the most part at 20 knots with 10 to 11 foot seas. Extreme north coast east winds at 10 knots with nine foot seas. Cook Inlet tomorrow, small craft advisories, north to northeast winds 25 knots, six to eight foot seas. And for the uh, <clears throat> Kamishak Bay area, east winds at 30 knots with 8-foot seas. And the Barren Islands, southeast 15, east 15 for the uh, western North Gulf Coast, but much stronger gale force winds out of the east for the eastern North Gulf Coast there around Middleton Island. Seas up to 13 feet. Small craft advisories, Prince William Sound, northeast 25, and seas uh, around 4 feet, give or take. And for the... Uh, Outlook on Saturday there, lighter winds for Prince William Sound, northeast to 10 and seas back down to 2 feet or less. East winds 15 for the eastern North Gulf Coast and southeast at 10 for the west side there. And the Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, light east winds at 10 knots, 2 to 5 foot seas. And Cook Inlet, north to northeast breeze at 10 knots with slight seas. And for the Kodiak Island, southwest, 15 knots there with seas 8 feet on the eastern side of the island, Shilakoff Strait, 2 foot seas and uh, 20 knot winds that connect the Castle Cape as well as Bristol Bay, both out of the southwest, and small craft advisories for the Alaska Peninsula as winds will be westerly at 25 knots. And then for the day Saturday, Bering Sea side of the peninsula, southwest 15, small craft advisories continue on the Pacific side from Cape Sarachev to Castle Cape for 25 knot westerly winds, and then Castle Cape all the way up the east side of Kodiak, you're looking at west winds at 20 knots with 8 to 9 foot seas. Shelikoff Strait, west winds 15 and 3 foot seas. Fox Islands tomorrow uh, on Alaska Island, small craft advisories, 
West winds 30 knots, 15 foot seas. Unmac Island, west winds 35 knots with 16 foot seas. About the same for the uh, central Aleutians, west winds 35 knots. And Amchitka, west winds 35 knots. In fact, gale warnings for the, uh, the entire Aleutian chain with the exception of on Alaska Island. And then for Saturday, small craft advisories now. Winds come down a little bit, at least under the threshold, the gale threshold. And at 30 knots there for with 12 foot seas, Western Aleutians, Adak and Atka West 30 knots, and Fox Islands West Southwest 25 to 30 knots with 11 to 14 foot seas. Southwest coast, South of Ninvac Island, Southwest at 15, West 20 there for the Pribilofs, and Yukon Delta Coast, Southeast at 15, East 15, St. Matthew Island, and St. Lawrence Island, Norton Sound, both out of the east at 20 knots. And then for Saturday, northeast 20 for St. Lawrence Island, southwest 10 to 15 along the southwest coast, and light winds out of the south of the Pribilofs at 10 knots, St. Matthew Island, northeast at 20, Norton Sound, east winds 15 knots and three foot seas. Uh, pretty brisk up there, wind conditions continue for the entire stretch of the Arctic coast, uh, or small craft advisories there, east winds 30 knots with seven to 10 foot seas, and then from Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, east winds 25 knots, Cape Thompson to Wales, east to 20. And then for Saturday, Wales to Cape Thompson, east winds 20 knots, so no change there, but gale warnings now for the western Arctic coast from Cape Beaufort up to, say, Point Lay, and then small craft advisories for the central and a portion of the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, and then a little bit lighter, call it northeast to 20 over toward Demarcation Point, with seas running four feet on the east side to 11 feet west. And for tonight, again, uh, rain continues with a slow-moving uh, weather system there, low center near Kodiak, uh, trying to exit the area with periods of rain for the North Gulf Coast. Rain and wind will continue to slowly increase along the mainly the coastal areas of the Panhandle, and it stays wet and windy, occasionally wet and windy over the Aleutians and more likely the southern Bering Sea into the Pribilofs, but dry over the interior, and a few light snow showers possible central eastern Beaufort Sea coast as those troughs pass by. And not much change for tomorrow, but more rain for the Panhandle on Saturday, but dry over the interior. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.